All right, so we're still at it. Just still going on this truck, just plugging away, working as hard as we can, um, making up for every little uh, lost time we can by starting this a little later than we wanted to. Um, right now, I am, let me flip the camera here. Right now, I am trying to get the old, ugly, square body fuel cell out of it. Um, I've already pumped all the fuel out of it using a diesel can because that one was the empty can sitting around. Um, pulling it out, trying to just get everything back here set up. My dad's um, got some other responsibilities he's working on tonight, so I'm doing this. Um, last couple nights since the last video, we have right here we got the new back window. That's what this big old box is right here. But he got the water pump on for good. You can see the light just making it shine like crazy. Um, power steering brackets on. Um, pump and pulley. Start of the AC and one alternator bracket. They're not on for good. If you can see that um, nice uh, socket head cap Allen screw. That's what he wants on it. But we're waiting for bolts. They've been kind of the place we ordered for from has not shipped them till today so we won't see them for a few days uh, it's Wednesday right now supposedly we probably won't see them till Monday oh he got all the the new spark plug wires set up I think it looks so good how they're all even ran back um, he's going away from an HEI distributor like it had to a small cap just to clean everything up back there so the wires can run where they need to um, that's the fuel injection right there it's a Holly sniper kit um, he's got on he back here he's got some nice smooth valve covers they're a lot like original big block ones but they're stainless um, polished stainless uh, they the reason they aren't on yet is because they're too short they hit the rockers um, so we just got some adapters um, we just we still got so much to do um, yeah I better get at it. Alright, so the Cherokee's in. Getting some different wheels put on it. That's what it had. That's what I'm putting on it. I know it almost seems like I'm going backwards. But I've just never cared for black wheels. They do got that um, shiny chrome, well not shiny chrome, it's more just a silver ring. But it's just too much black on a dark green Jeep, I think. So I got a really good deals on these wheels and tires. Pretty much the same size tires, they're Rubicon takeoffs off a LJ. Um, and the nice thing, um, another nice thing about these is they are 16 inch wheels. And I'm going to be doing the WJ knuckle swap on the front end of this. And so 15 inch wheels I hear is possible to fit. But 16s I know is definitely possible. And um, so that's a good starting point. Eventually I'll change the wheels. But for now it's what it gets. Um, especially, you know, trying to make the, the cost of this very feasible. So I got both front wheels on it right now. Going to move on to the rear. New shoes are on. Back sits about right where I hoped it would. Just fits perfectly. I actually really like the way these wheels look. It just brightens the whole Jeep up, which is what I wanted by going to these wheels rather than keeping the black ones. It's got the spare tire on. As you can see, it does still have the nubbies. It's the original spare from this the 06 LJ that these came off of and tires in really good shape 
garage kept its whole life, supposedly. Um, so, I think then one other thing I need to do on this is I was looking at these rock sliders here, and I think they're actually on backwards side to side. If you look, the front's way too far forward, and the rear doesn't come back as far to really be steps. And it's kind of wedged all wrong. I think that's the issue. Another project I gotta do is so right in here on the the uh, shifter display thing, whatever you call that. My grandpa put this switch in for the light bar that's on the front bumper. And I've just personally I don't like that switch there. So I bought a new piece that doesn't have a hole drilled in it. Got that and this switch panel that replaces the ashtray. Um, I just got to mount it. I just did this about a week ago. Haven't really needed the Jeep, so it's been sitting apart. Need to do that. I was hoping to do that tonight, but it's getting late enough. That'll probably be a project for another night. Um, parents for my birthday about a month ago gave me a double din bezel to go here, so I got to find a radio to go there. I um, want to go touch screen, just can't decide which one I want quite yet. But that's just all on the list of projects, especially with the uh, the 72 K10 over there in the garage that we're getting ready for Barrett Jackson. Got too many going on. But all right, today I got this Suburban in. Um, it's a pretty cool rig. Someone's building an overlanding rig out of the 72 K10 Suburban. It's on an 05 Chevy chassis. So it's got the 6 liter LS, 4L80, um, the desirable 14 bolt rear end. The one thing, in my opinion, that's kind of a downfall is that it does have IFS in the front. But for how the guy will use it as like an overlanding rig, it'll be perfect. A while back we re-geared this one to 513s, put an ARB in the front and a Detroit locker in the rear. And then he went and had someone build these custom bumpers rock slider steps and then this rear bumper i love the way this rear bumper turned out it's got like a spot for a jerry can on that driver's side and then the spare tire over here on the passenger side and a ladder that mounts up that falls the lines of the of the rig up to the roof um, but it's here because of this hose right here we made the AC work, adapted it all, um, but it, you can see right those two screw holes. That is from these flares. When these flares were put on, who knows how many years ago, they uh, the screws that were in it went into this hose. And when we made the AC work, those screws were plugging the holes, and then he, they uh, switched them out, put these bigger head screws on, and as soon as they pulled them out, it started leaking. So. We are gonna have to do a union. We had to make this one. Um, had to take a union. They're only about, I mean, you can see the end there and there. Um, that's how long it was. And so we had this spare, spare pipe, um, AC pipe that we made about just slightly longer so that we can connect it from this end to the other end right there to reconnect it so we can get the AC working. Um, after that, we also shaved the rear end, like the 14 bolt, did a 13 bolt diff cover on it. Um, we, uh, and it's leaking, so we gotta figure out what's leaking on that today also. So we'll see what we can find. All right, we got this one all wrapped up for the day. Um, just finishing up everything with charging the AC back up. Uh, we fixed the leak in the rear end. That turned into quite the treat. Um, it was uh, the bottom, we shaved it, we put a 13 bolt diff cover on it. And where the drain plug was, we just epoxied it all up, thinking, oh, it won't leak. Well, it leaked, like a sieve. Ended up having to chisel it all out and weld the hole up. And then back in here, on this hose, um, that was actually super easy with this tool right here greatest thing ever for this we got the pull it up there you can see that end of the crimp that end 
really nice. This end we're able to do with the holes out here in the open, stuff it in. And there was just barely enough room to crimp that with this tool. Oh, couldn't have went any better. So now I just gotta button it up and she can go home. All right, so since the Suburban is all wrapped up, I'm getting on my own stuff today. Um, I've always hated the light bar that sat right up here on the top of these brackets. I just sat so tall, it was way out of place right there. I think it's perfect. Get a play with the angles. Uh, that's another thing is the angles were all squampus. I'm kind of anal about that. Um, and also be nice to clean up the wiring because before the wiring right here for it ran down the pipe and you can see where the two zip ties were and through and over to this. But over here and ran it up the lines for the winch up here and just have a it so much cleaner less wire not have this stuff in front of the radiator um, and then I also got to fix this so the light bar would randomly come and go and so this right here was a connector that was falling apart when I pulled the tape back because um, I was trying to figure out why there was one color different this green one here on the other end can't really see it but down in there it's black so I figured right there would be a good spot on tape it and then I tugged on the other two wires the blue one came apart I think this green one's okay though I'll double check it probably triple check it and then I can come in here and I can get this finished up the initial part of the project but After, uh, I don't know, all evening, got this all done. I moved the light bar down to the bottom. Looks a lot cleaner, more how it should have been set up. One nice thing about it is, uh, like I was saying earlier, you know, the wiring was ran over here, and up and around and over. Just like this, I was able to just route it all across the winch and over and around. And then it was run down here. All the winch wiring was down, run down here around the radiator and up and around. There were so many pinch points, like right here, and none of it had anything to protect the wires. I mean, the ground, you know, big whoop, that one rugs through, it's ground on ground, whatever. But the power, direct short, no fuse in it, because, you know, there's never a fuse on a winch wire. Um, Man, that, that could melt the whole Jeep down. So that really worried me. So I had to take and on this one, you can kind of see how I had to take and kind of dremel, take a little burr bit and clearance the bottom of the grill so I could get that heater hose piece in to protect that. Because there was really nothing else that I could put there that looked decent, really any better. And then down here, let me get my light on this. I had to take, so this big wire loom is it. Took it and routed it up here, around and over. And then I uh, routed up through here, um, through the bottom, up through this hole in the fender, around and over to the battery. I have the winch wiring right there, and then the light bar wiring relays right there for it. Fuse is tucked down there. That was all really infused is how it was. Then I came over here, I got everything over here put back together, that's all taped back up. And then on the inside, I uh, placed the bezel so I don't have a switch cut. It is slightly darker color, but with this black switch panel, um, I don't think it looks bad. If it didn't have that, and it had an ashtray that was the same color, look out of place, but that doesn't bother me too much. That crack right there bothers me more, but I did get the light bar to work. So now I have a working light bar. So tomorrow 
we will be on to this project in here. I have to be helping him see if I can do some stuff on the interior. I think is what I'll be doing while he wrap, while my dad wraps up the um, stuff on the engine bay as much as he can while we're still waiting for the bolts for the accessory brackets. But we'll see how far we can get. I stopped by on my way home after church that's why I'm all in a suit right now and uh, just seeing everything that my dad got done after I had to leave yesterday and the progress continues um, yeah, motors get so close valve covers are all on now fuel ejection mostly done Excuse me, the evaporator box is on. He has all the bolts. They came for the accessory brackets. Man, I got hiccups now. Um, yeah, that's all going together really good. Yesterday, I got a fair amount done on the interior. I got the instrument clustering column out, the glove box out, dash pad changed. So now it's saddle, not the gray silver there that was on it. Um, it's pretty well ready to start going back together. Hopefully we're not missing any parts because getting parts so far, so far has been a treat. My uncle came and helped yesterday. We got the, the tailpipes out, the rest of the exhaust. Um, what else happened? Oh, well my uncle was here, he painted the bottom of the cab. Got that all done. And I'm trying to think of what else did yesterday that I know of. Oh, in here, he got the core support ready to be painted. It was pretty, pretty rough. The paint was pretty ragged and doing a little bit of body work on it. That's pretty well ready to paint. That's the rear cross member. Um, we pulled it out when we put, or sorry, not we, my dad did. Pulled it out when he put the big square body tank in it, but now that it's getting a Boyd welding tank, that cross member's going back in it. That is the one out of the truck. We've held on to it for all these years. Got a few other things ready to paint right there. But yeah, progress just moves forward. We'll see how much we can do this week. I mean, we're down to two weeks before we got to have pictures submitted to Barrett Jackson. Um, I don't know if I showed this before. We do have the tires over here. We got these wheels, they're the Ultra 164s. The, we thought they were the bigger holes, which on this truck, these small holes won't work. So over there in the boxes, we got Mickey Thompson Classic 3s. So we gotta run those over to the tire store this week, get them swapped over. Kinda sucks to buy brand new wheels, mount them and can't send them back. But on this truck, if it ain't exactly what we want, we're pretty much fine tuning it. It's just too nice of a truck to to settle on on some things um yeah that's it for this week and every the progress is made we uh are hoping here to get this all these accessory brackets put on and have the motor pretty well wrapped up this week because the bed is done um getting the paint touched up so we gotta go get that and we gotta do a whole, whole bunch of cut and polish so that's it for this week.